I'm Libby Gibson, town manager. Welcome to what's going on in town government. Should I do our summer thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to remember what it is. Um, okay, so for our visitors, if you're a visitor and you're watching, we have a very active town government. We have a lot of citizen involvement, and we talk about it once a week or so, Gino yeah. and I here, on we say what happened at the select board meeting. For our residents, you already know about the town government, and you probably are involved, or you know something about it, so you, hopefully this will help you know what's going on, right. in case you don't already know. So, at our weekly board meeting this week, we had a, we had a pretty long meeting, I would say. It went past your 8 p.m. deadline, Gina. Sure did, and I stuck it out. That. You did stick it, it out. Was it was proud it. of you. Yeah, it was, it was definitely worth it. So we have some announcements at the beginning of our meeting, and this week we announced that it's Mariah Mitchell's birthday, 200th birthday celebration on August 1st. So Dr. Jorgensen, Dr. Regina Jorgensen, uh, Director of Astronomy at Mariah Mitchell, read a nice proclamation and handed out some, I should have brought it, she handed out some pins, which you can also get at Visitor Services. So if you want to get a pen, head over there for Mariah Mitchell's oh, nice. 200th a... birthday celebrated in August. And I think there's some other activities and are events that are happening. They're free. Yeah, free pens. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. In big business, we had a um, town council in reviewing open meeting law, public records law, conflict of interest law. Annually, we've started a process where town council comes and gives this briefing to new committee board and commission members about these laws which they need to know about if they're on a municipal town board committee or commission. And if you're an older member or, you know, not older, you know what I mean, but on a board for a while, it's still a good refresher. So town council gave this overview to the board and they've been to numerous ones of these things. So. But it was just it was just a, a refresher kind of a thing, and they also were. To, she also there was some discussion that they had about what recusal means versus dis, ver, and when you need to disclose things and when you would abstain versus recuse and that sort of thing. The differentiations between that stuff. So we talked about that for a while, and then the board adopted a special town me, a warrant for the special town meeting that we are having on October tenth. We have 16 articles. There are, I believe, five relating to marijuana, two large capital projects relating to traffic improvements along Old South Road Corridor and Milestone Road from the Rotary to Nobodier Farm Road, several non-controversial, I hope, financial articles moving money around in the current fiscal year, a couple of supplemental appropriations for some existing capital projects. And we have one citizen petition, which bans single-use plastics. Good. Ban. Total ban. Now, the reality of this is that that's not really legal. A ban on the use of single-use plastics. You could potentially do a ban on the sales, but use is a different thing. And there's all manner of practical issues with this that are going to make it very, very difficult to just launch into that. This is going to need some lead time. Is, is this something that's happened somewhere else? I don't know of a flat out ban on single use plastics. There are at least two, maybe more, and there may be some in the works, um, single use water bottle bans in Massachusetts. Now, I don't know about the rest of the country. I haven't really oh, yeah. well, researched we're gonna, that. We're going to find out. Yeah, that would be good to we're, find we'll out. We'll be finding I that. mean, it's a, it's a big deal, plastics. There are good uses of plastics, and, they, and then there are not so good uses. And, and actually, it's the, you know, what's left behind. It, it's all left behind somewhere. And if it's not recycled... Is it possible that this could be non-binding? It's possible. Yes, it is possible that it can I mean, be that, binding. That's okay too. Yep, that's okay too. We're starting with straws. Exactly. We have our a, a straw initiative. It's not even a bylaw or a rule or a regulation. It's a voluntary effort. It's really taken off. I think I have noticed some places that are still using plastic straws. I don't know why. I, every time I use one, I'm like, I wish I had. A, a well, Gino, you can get a reusable straw yourself. Metal, glass. I don't glass. know if I like that idea, Libby. Why not? I, I, first of all, I don't want to carry it around. Well, they're little. 
unless it's made, you, unless it's got double use, like instead of single use double use, you could use it as a pen and still suck the. But imagine if you could do that, though. If they made them so that somehow it was. Be great. Some inventor came up. Maybe with that you idea. should invent that. You could go on Kickstarter and get Don't, it going. You're giving everybody ideas here. I'm though. sorry. This is but our idea. Hey, somebody take it. Take it. It's it's your idea. Um, All right. So that's okay. okay. So we know that's. Uh, yeah. So that's October. coming up. October 10th, the that's warrant going is going to be one. posted later. Hopefully today, if I can get my act together. But it will be in the newspaper. <sighs> Not next week. Maybe the week, I don't remember when. We'll it's going to be in the newspaper. We okay. will have it on the channel. We will be talking about all the articles. And, all right. You know, so, so more to can, follow on this. And there, there's a schedule online right now, a timeline, that shows when the meet, different meetings are happening. Okay. So if you're interested, please go to that. We also approved a request to the S Secretary of State's office. These questions that I mentioned for Old South Road Corridor Improvements and Milestone, these are going to be votes at town meeting that require a ballot vote. They are debt exclusions. They require a ballot vote. So they are going to go on the um, state ballot in November. However, before the first Wednesday in August, which this year happens to be August 1st, if your town wants to get a local ballot question on the state ballot, you have to get it to the Secretary of State's office as a request before, in our case, August 1st. So we did, and it requires a vote of the board and blah, 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 some other stuff. So um, we did that request. So we're, these two questions will be on the ballot, state ballot in November. So we don't have to have a separate special election is okay. the reason for that. Okay, I'm, I'm exhausted already. We're not even halfway through this. Oh, boy. The host community agreement for our potentially first recreational marijuana retail store. We've been talking about this for months now. And the board approved what's called a host community agreement. And it basically, it's an agreement that the store has with the host community that allows them to have their business based on some different conditions, including some payments of different amounts for different things. They can't open until our current moratorium has expired, which is December 31st, 2018. So they'd potentially be able to open if fully licensed by January 2019. We have a, one of the warrant articles for the special town meeting warrant will limit the number of retail establishments that we can have here, which is two. That is the proposal. So this is potentially one. We have several others who've been approaching us that want to get before the board to get approval, get host community agreements. That, that, that is a required agreement in order to have a retail establishment in a town, amongst other things, including state requirements. So the board got into a little bit of a discussion about, OK, if this particular one, Green Lady, located at 11 Amelia Drive, is already sort of taken, you know, if everything continues on track, then how are we going to pick the next one, assuming we're, we're going to have two? And they talked a bit about, uh, there's a couple of other towns. Now, this is all very new, bear in mind. There isn't a, a totally defined process for this yet in any town in Massachusetts. At least one town that we know of, though, has developed a kind of an RFP for retail marijuana establishment. So you set forth some criteria and you say, hey, if you want to have a retail establishment here, here's where you can do it. Um, here's what we want to see in this type of business. Um, send us your proposal. So we talked about that. And I'm sure that the board will have some more discussion about that, probably following the, warrant or following the special town meeting so we can see if this article passes that limits to two. And there are some associated zoning articles as well. So uh, gray, Green Lady is going to open, most likely. I'm going to say most likely. But yet a Unless lawyer. Unless something crazy happens that I don't know about right all now. All right. But a lawyer for another group that wants to open mm -hmm. felt like something wasn't right there. What was that all about? It sounded to me like a couple of lawyers did that. Yeah. Um, first of all, that's what lawyers do when they are They're advocating. representing other potential yeah, they, people, which is fair enough. Which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing, I, I, I think they were trying to say they felt like we were putting the cart before the horse somehow. Yeah. However, 
We've been talking with Green Lady for months, almost a year, actually. And they've done everything that they've they done everything they've been asked to. to. Right. Um, yes. And these and, guys really weren't talking at this point, the way Green Lady had been. Well, they're the not. We, so we've developed a checklist because now we're you know these things are coming in a little bit more rapidly and numerously. So we've developed a checklist that says here's what you have, in, have to have in place before you can even come to the town for anything. And one of the things is there are things like meetings with town staff. So we want to understand your security plan. We want to understand your waste disposal plan. We want to understand how your energy use is going to go. What sort of, what sorts of energy saving measures are you going to be implementing? We want to know where you are going to be located, what your hours are. All of that, so what you're going to be selling, what your business plan is, looks like, what, how your setup in your establishment is going to be, um, what your parking lot's going to be like, how you're going to let people in and out, a whole, a whole lot of different things. And um, so, so they're all most likely going to have a chance to provide this, but, the, but and I think there seems to be this sense of urgency to this, but the board can consider this in whatever manner it wishes within the confines of the state regulations. And that is exactly what we're doing. So there was... That's a, why you didn't, they didn't, they weren't fighting much about it. They were just, they just brought up their concerns that... Yeah, I'm not even sure. wanted what, to keep it I level. think the, okay. Yeah. I'm probably going to say something politically incorrect, but it sounded to me like the concern was, I want my client to be next, so... Okay. I, so please work out a process so that that can happen. Okay. And it could, it could be wrong. If they, go, if, if they do what Green Lady did. Well, and even, yes. I mean, you got to, you got to, they're, pretty much everybody's in a queue right now. Right. So they're all going to eventually make their way in here. And I don't think the board is planning on issuing, you know, again, provided that the town meeting action happens as is proposed, which it might not, but... Let's pretend that it does. The board, I don't see the board saying, okay, the next group that comes along, that's the one that's going to get the next license, the only other license. That, that's not what's going to happen. They are probably going to establish some criteria, as I just mentioned. They're going to, they're going to hear out the various groups and then make an ultimate decision. They're not, and which they can do. And this is going to change and we'll add to it or change yep, certain things absolutely. as we go. We can uh, do that anyway. Yes. The, I know pe what people are thinking. They're going to say, well, are these separate businesses or are they in combination with other businesses? Are they allowed to be, let's say, in a pharmacy? Would a pharmacy be allowed to sell uh, um, recreational marijuana? They sell cigars. No, no, they can't. Okay. You, you, it's not, they a, can't. you can't have another business attached you to it. You cannot. It no. has to be solely for the yes. means of selling marijuana. Yeah. Okay. See, that's going to be a question on their minds. Okay. There's a we know that. there's a lot to this. There are the state regulations are extensive. Okay, that could change. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I people and, and the other thing they're thinking is, well, how many bars do we have? About a hundred, and so you can get alcohol in a number of, you know, it's accessibility and money and yeah. There's a lot of things to consider. There, there is. Okay, we got it. Okay, we had a real estate issue that involved. Our purchase and sale agreement with Harbor Fuel, that's a little bit complicated. I won't, I'm not going to go into It's going to take me an hour to explain that. All right. um, but it, it's a step towards um, completing a real estate transaction with Harbor Fuel so that the fuel tank farm is eventually moved out of town to a location near the airport. Okay, we had Save Our Sound in. That is a Cape Cod-based group that is seeking to prevent offshore wind projects in certain areas of Nantucket Sound. And they had some other towns that they said from the Cape and the Vineyard that had already signed on to this. They, they're, they're, they're seeking a letter of support for federal legislation that prohibits wind farms in certain areas of Nantucket I, I was surprised, you know, seeing that, uh, you know, we got Sconset Beach and the environment and all this other stuff that people are so concerned about. I mean, this save our sound is it's really save our view, isn't it? It's really about rich people that don't want to look at, at wind farms. <laughs> I don't know if that's how but I would describe it. But why didn't they um, even discuss it. it? They all said, okay, yeah, we'll, that, we'll sign that. Well, Gino, um, they had the information in their packet. Wow, and that was we, a blowout. I, was I, like, think, I think maybe if you're not really 
closely following wind farm technology and wind tech, wind energy and wind oh, that yeah, field, because then if you, you put might them not. In, God forbid, uh, you know, you have to pull them back out again later. I mean, how many shipwrecks are out there? A Thousands. Lot. Probably a lot. Yeah, and now, did they have oil inside them? Did, did, did anybody try to pick them up and get I, them out of there? No, know. they I, sunk to the bottom. This is, a, this is a bad thing. We are going to be able to see wind farms off the South Shore. It's too. just, it, it's not that we have to put them in. It's just, why, why say it that way? Why, why not have the option later in case we do need to, to put some in that we, we have it available? All right, we're well, going to move close on. Close the door on it. We're going to move on now. It's my on. show. Nice. Sorry, that was the one thing that really bugged me. I, I guess. Yeah. Good thing you didn't say anything. Yeah, I was right? thinking about it. All God, the we would have been there another I hour. I sleep. Really? <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so then we had Scotts of Beach Preservation Fund in. They are seeking the board's approval. Okay, let me back up. They have a, a, um, an erosion control project on a certain area of the base of Scotts of Bluff, and it is at least partially on town property. They are seeking to extend and expand that project to more town property. In order to do that, they need to go back to the Conservation Commission and get approval. And they need to start by filing what's called the Notice of Intent. This is what we intend to do. Can we do it or not? So in order to do that, they need the board's approval because the property owner has to sign off on a Notice of Intent. So we have been going, uh, we have had discussions about this for months now. In fact, this whole discussion of the limited project began seven years ago, six, seven years ago. Yeah. So the board has had a number of discussions in executive session about this because it is uh, potential litigation, maybe either way. And long story short, because we can't go into everything here, but I, I would say both sides had pretty ample opportunity last night to present their cases, the proponents and the opponents both, and they, they both both sides spoke, and in the end, it was not a unanimous vote, but the board voted to assent to the notice of intent to allow them to go forward to the Conservation Commission to seek a notice of intent for the expanded project, provided that they prepare for the town at their expense, engineered plans for the existing alternative access plan, the existing alternative access plan. So what that is, is SBPF, Sconset Beach Preservation Fund, arranged with, with um, abutters in a certain area that if a section of the bluff and the road were to fail, that their property will be able to be used for an alternative access for people in a certain area of Baxter Road. Okay? However, the, what we are seeking is for those plans to be, sh quote, shovel ready, engineered, so that if that were to happen, the bluff were to fail, we can get, we can have a plan to put into place immediately and start getting a road constructed. So they will be providing, they, the condition of this approval for them to go to the Conservation Commission is that they, they need to provide us those plans by September 30th of 2018, and they have said they can do that at their expense. Okay, where is this road? If someone's house falls in, so the road would be where? Well, do you know, we don't, well, we don't really have a map, but um, I should, probably should have brought one. It would connect through to, um, uh, uh, I, I, to Pulpis Road? It would, mean, a, a road that would get directly it would, it to? Would, it, would, it would sort of um, go around a little back of the golf club in in the back and then and then the so Baxter Road itself would sort of move behind some homes and but it would come from uh, what's that direction? The Baxter Road towards Sconset. It would come from that way. Well there's so a it map right behind you if you wanted to actually It's is too it it's too big. Okay, okay, that, okay. that's too right, big right. of a thing. It's probably online somewhere if All you right. are navigating the Sconset Beach uh, part of the website. but The access is for what, though? The access is for the homes that would, if this oh, section if of the road access, failed, gotcha. they would have no access to their homes because they use Baxter Road to get there. So this sort of moves. It's not exactly moving Baxter Road, but it's, it's sort of creating a new road that would I be understand. for them only. Right. Got it. All right. But All right. it would allow access to the lighthouse at certain times of is the this, year. Is this a possibility that could happen? I mean, well, I think so, it. I don't know about 
I don't know what we mean by soon. Is it a possibility? Absolutely. Look at the bluff out there. It's narrow. Yeah. It's getting closer to the road. I think that's, you know, that's a serious concern. Anyway. Anyway, so that yeah. ended up being um, approved. Approved. So it's going to the ConCom. It's going to go to the ConCom, which does not necessarily mean that they will get the subsequent license. Well, first of all, it doesn't mean the ConCom is going to approve it. No. Secondly, if they do approve it, it doesn't mean the board will allow them to use the property for this. They want to see what ConCom says. If it had been does. passed on to ConCom last night, mm -hmm. what would have happened, Libby? Well, if they had disapproved. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not totally sure, but among the options of what could have happened is they could have renewed SBPF could have renewed its permit for the existing project. Yeah, which is a thousand feet of roughly, roughly, feet, right? Yep. They could keep or that going. They could keep possibly. it going, or they could take it out. Or I they, suppose. I yep. Or they could say to the town, but "Would what you they please take it over?" Extend it. Uh, for another 4,500, is that what it is, 5,000 feet? It, I, I, it's, clo it's around, four, I think it's around a total of about 4,000 feet. Okay. It's, right, it's a good it. amount of land. Mm -hmm. Okay, in other news, um, I gave I give the board a monthly town management activity port report, I did that, and we talked a little bit about fiscal 20 capital projects. So that's what happened at our board meeting. We do not have a meeting next week because the board is on its summer schedule. They meet twice a month in July and August during the summer. So our next meeting is on August 8th. Okay. And anything, anything really exciting happening for that meeting? Well, right now, we don't have the agenda final yet, but okay. it looks like it, one, of the thing, one of the items is probably going to be an update to the board from me about where we are with securing consultants to do independent reviews of certain aspects of the Surfside Crossing 40B project. We've executed an independent review of traffic issues, and we are working towards securing independent reviews of water quality and possibly endangered species review. Okay. So the board wants to know where we are with those. They will want to know where we are with those things at the okay. next meeting. So that, and we're working on that. And what else is... Did you run in the triathlon last week? I did not. Were you in it? I can't oh. run. Oh. I, I'd have to train to do that. It's just too oh, painful. that's too hard, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't in it either. Was your brother in it? Was no. Jamie involved? He was involved. Okay. Yes, good. he was not in it. I have not seen him. I hope he's doing well. Um, I think he's doing well. I haven't really seen him either. Okay. Um, he's around. Uh, I'm just looking through my calendar to see what's coming up. The Boston Pops is coming up on, Ooh, when is that again? Playing, the 11th? Who, who, who got well, I don't know. I, what? I should know that. I'm yeah, sorry, I, I don't did, know that. I, if I heard it's it, It's probably somebody cool, because they usually get did. somebody really cool. Yeah. Uh, what's that? What else? Gino, I'm going to mention something that I've noticed, see if other people have noticed this, and see if you okay. try to think of why. Lately, past month monthish, when I have left work at, say, between 5.30 and 6.30, I have, and even a bit earlier, 4.30-ish, maybe 4, I've noticed a lot of parking spots open I in have. the downtown. I have agree. you noticed that? Yes, why I is have. that? I feel like that's a new thing. Are people just coming home from the beach? I, I think, but, I, but I feel like I haven't noticed it like that before. Um, well, a lot of people have the vacation rentals now. And so they're, they're out of town or they're So they're, at their, they're just not they're coming home. into town? They're not coming in at that time. So that's a great time to come downtown and that is sit a great on the bench and have a coffee. Yes, and you could ride your bike downtown. Uh, you yes, don't have to take right. your car or you could take the shuttle. Yes. It runs very frequently this I time of year. I love riding my bike right now. It's, right now is a great time oh, to ride your bike. Fantastic. Do you know, so I'm going to start trying to ride my bike once or twice a week. The, th the problem is, I, ha I, I know this is a bad excuse, but I have a ton of stuff to carry. So I really was prepared to ride this morning, and then I re realized I brought all my stuff home from the meeting. Oh, I can't carry all that. You know I need I a cart. Also, uh, not on that issue of uh, cars. People have been pretty nice. Okay. I haven't seen any road rage. Really? Have you? Yes, I have. Okay. Well, I'm maybe gonna, it's just me. I don't know. Should we mention a, a little... I see people letting people in a lot. 
Oh, know, I, I, I try to do that. A lot of that. Yeah, you do. I have seen a lot of that, That's actually. Pretty good. It is pretty good. That's a so good here's a tip, and probably a lot of people do this. If you're on a road like, say, Old South or Orange Street even, if somebody's coming out, I always try, if no one's behind me, I try to let as many people go as, as, as I can. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes the oncoming people don't let that happen, so then you're sitting there waiting for... Well, that's right. So you've yeah. got to play it. You've got to assess the situation. You've got to assess the situation. Yeah. So I want to mention a, a, um, something. I've got, I did get a complaint today about trash. And the clean team spends a lot of time on weekends cleaning up the island downtown, and they always go to a place out of town every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. And um, it, an esteemed member of the clean team contacted me today and said he feels that the clean team is working really hard, but their work is for naught because people just throw their trash all over the place. They do. They do. It's true. There's a lot of trash thrown all over the place. So I want people to really, I mean, we ought to have pride in the place where we live and work and visit. Yeah. So just don't let your trash go out of a trash can or when you know when you're done with it take it in, take it out, put it oh, in a yeah. trash can. It's not that hard. Right. It's education and, and uh, it's good that you bring it up. And it's personal People responsibility. Just need to be educated about this. And it's, you're not really supposed to by the way put your personal household trash in a town trash can. And by the way when you do that first thing in the morning, it blocks up the trash can. For the day. Yeah, and I, I, and when people do that, I don't like digging through to find out who did it. Well, because, guess what? You know, their names are on a lot of those. People envelopes. are digging through to see whose <laughs> names are on it. So if you are someone who does that, you're probably going to be getting a phone call pretty soon. Oh, that's a good one. Um, anyway, there's one last little tiny thing. The Civil War monument. I just want to do a public service announcement. Right. Is not a rotary. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a no, rotary. It's not. So, so don't, don't if get upset somebody, if somebody doesn't go around it. Thank you. That's right. And That's I don't. All. I sometimes do, and sometimes I don't. It, you do ha also have to assess the Assessing, situation there assessing. because sometimes it's just easier, and you don't want to get in a thing with somebody. But it's not a rotary. Yeah. My someone dad came up. Someone said, "Hey, Libby, we got to do something about that rotary around the." Uh, well, Civil War my room. esteemed father always had this idea that we should move it. Oh. Pick it up and move it to where the um, dry cleaners was. And it's a little, it it's a little land bank park now. Oh, yeah. So he thought that would be a great place for it. Well, what do you think? In theory, it's a nice idea, and it would eliminate this kind of obstacle. But oh, yeah, but obstacles. It's historic, and too. obstacles slow traffic down. And did I hear, It's a nice place for people now, to I'm not, I'm look not, at. I'm not starting a rumor. But did I hear there's talk about making guard? Is that Gardner right there? One way? Oh, God. Okay. Did I bring something up? No, no, you? no. Um, every, I don't know, four years or so, that idea comes up right around now, right. and sometimes a little earlier, because of the obvious traffic issues. And some people say, well, let's make Gardner one way and That'll Westchester one way. and. It, it, I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, that is a road. I hope everybody's doing this. When you go onto it, from either end, take a deep breath. Yeah. You just take a deep breath. Right. Pull your mirrors in yep. and take a deep breath. Right. One and just try to be nice. We'll cars that are smaller, that don't have yep. to be giant. When you have a giant SUV, two <laughs> SUVs, and it doesn't work. You got it. So just, just be patient and careful, or if you have a giant SUV, maybe just don't go that way. Go a different way. Yeah, that's right. I know it's hard, because that's a direct route into town, but think, I think it's right. keep that Civil War monument there. Yeah, I, 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 I had to disagree. It's a classic. I, I kind of, um, yeah, it's a classic. It's just one of those Nantucket things. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. See you next time.